Hello Canadian gardeners, cold climate gardeners, and gardeners of the extremes. How are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley. I'm a soil scientist by formal education with a minor in plant science. And on this channel, we take that science and we apply it to tips, tricks, hacks in the garden. Sometimes we prove them correct, otherwise they fall short. So if you like the sounds of that, be sure to hit that subscribe, comment, and join this awesome crew. If you're returning, thank you for coming back. I enjoy your comments. They are a ton of fun. Keep them up. Today we're talking about transplant shock or plant shock and exactly what's going on, why it happens and the science behind it. But make sure you stay till the end of the video because we are then going outdoors. And I'm gonna show you exactly how I transplant my plant. So transplant shock. What does it look like? Let's start there. It generally looks like a very floppy plant, something that looks like it's been drowned in water. It has zero structure to the stem left and the leaves are basically hanging off the plant. This isn't a cause of shock. This is just a symptom or a sign of shock. This isn't what's causing the shock to the plant. What's happening here, the cells are basically collapsing in on the plant leaves. So the reason why the plant cell walls are collapsing is for two reasons. The first one is that we haven't properly hardened our plant off before putting them outside, meaning the stress of the higher temperatures, the sun and the wind is drying the leaves out and therefore the stromata and the guard cells weren't able to adjust fast enough to the new conditions you've put it in. So essentially the plant is drying out at a rapid rate because we've changed the environment it lived in from a greenhouse to the great outdoors. So if you don't know what hardening off is, I suggest you check out this video right here. I will leave a link in the description below because that is going to help you understand exactly how to avoid this. Now, most cases people will say, well, I did put it outside or I got it from a greenhouse or a nursery that already had them in the great outdoors. And then if that is the case, it's most likely shock to the roots. Now, when we shock the roots because we've changed the combination of water, nutrients, and soil structure, or we've damaged the roots by fuddling around with them and pulling them apart and adjusting them, that means we've signaled to the roots that there is potentially going to be a lack of water and nutrients to supply the upper leaves of the plant. What ends up happening is the plant sends out a hormone, the hormone ABA, to the upper portions of the plant asking them to close their guard cells, shut down the process of respiration and bringing in CO2, and therefore photosynthesis. The reason why the roots are telling the leaves to shut down is because the roots aren't sure when they're going to get their next meal. If they don't know when their next meal is coming, they're not going to want to keep their flowers alive. They're not going to want to be shooting out new leaves. Their main goal is to preserve what they have left. But in some cases, they send such an extreme alert to the rest of the plant that they end up killing off a majority of the plant. Now, the good news is if you have shock in your garden right now, there is a fix for it. All you need to do is if your plant is in a container, simply take that container, put it in a shady spot out of the wind and water them continually. Those three things is going to be enough to revive your plant. Now, if it is in the garden, do not dig it up because you're just gonna cause more damage. Leave the plant where it's sitting, be sure to water on a regular basis and provide it with some coverage. And I'll show you what that coverage looks like. What I like to do is I like to take a bucket and cut the top, the bottom of the bucket off and have basically a big tunnel. Then I can put that bucket on top of the plant. It's going to shelter it from the wind and the heat of the sun, meaning it is going to reduce the stress or the amount of evaporation from the plant cell walls. And therefore, your plant is going to jump back faster. Now, if you don't have access to five gallon buckets, I completely understand that, but you can use almost anything. We can use a two liter pop bottle if it fits. 
cut both ends off. We can use cardboard to kind of prop it up in the soil around it. We can use wood. You can use a newspaper tunnel. Just get creative. And the main goal is to shelter the plant from the heat of the sun and the wind. This is going to cure your shock faster than something like sugar water or milk water. Please do not do that. I'm coming out with a series that puts all those hacks like eggshells, milk, water, sugar, water to bed and just try this. It's much more healthier for your plant and it will survive. So let's quickly review before we head outside and we look at plant shock. So we know that plant shock is caused by two things, improperly hardening the plant off and something has affected the roots. If we don't know what plant hardening the plant off is, we're gonna check out this video. But if we know we've hardened the plant off or we got it from an outdoor greenhouse or nursery, we are going to check out the root situation. Now, if your plant is already going through this, we know what has happened is we've sent a signal to the roots that water and nutrition is going to be lacking for the next bit. That has either been done because we've changed the mixture or the combination the plant is exposed to of water and nutrients, or we have damaged that root system. So if this has already happened, what we are going to do is we are going to try to block that plant from the extremes of heat and wind. This is going to prevent the shock from getting worse and is going to help your plant focus on being on the mend. Now, if we haven't planted our plants yet, let's head outside and take a look at what we can do to prevent this. Okay, so here's our pot. We have a spoon, our fertilizer, because we are doing a petunia, the petunia, marigolds, and a thing of water. So let's start with the petunia. What we always wanna do when we're, before we transplant, is we want to fully saturate the soil. Oh, See how wet that is? Like it is sopping wet. This is what we want before we transplant. This is going to reduce the stress on the roots because now the roots have the same water, nutrient, and air porosity that it had its whole life so far in the greenhouse. And we are gonna transplant it into dry soil. The reason for the dry soil is because we want this soil, this soil to mold around this container and it's going to reduce the shock if we are using dry here and wet here because this one hasn't decided what shape it's gonna take and I don't have to really alter it and mush it around the petunia. So if that makes any sense. Now, in some cases you won't have to do this, but if you wanna be on the safe side when it comes to transplanting, you're gonna to wanna to go through and you're gonna to wanna to get rid of all the leaves that are sick looking you're going to want to go through and get rid of all your sick leaves and all your blooms now this doesn't apply to every plant but there are lots that it does apply to so you can actually ask um let me know in the comments below if you're unsure and i will get back to you or you can ask your local greenhouse if these plants need to be deadheaded or if the flowers are kind of one flower only plants, or you can simply just Google on the internet, do I need to deadhead this plant? So these are the galaxy petunias. I love them so much. So now all I'm gonna do is go through and I'm going to pluck my flowers. And this is going to allow the plant to just focusing on saving the roots and hardying up the roots so that for the future. So now that the plant is mainly focused on leaf development and root development and not on flower development, we are good to go. So it doesn't look at any other horrifically damaged leaves. Because there's petunias going in here, I do use inorganic fertilizer. This isn't a necessary step. This has nothing to do with shock or transplant shock. This is just a personal preference. mix that around and now I'm going to dig my hole
And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do one push kind of where the plant go or where it goes these out. This is where the roots tend to get hooked on. And then one on this side. And now this should pop right out without massaging. And it does. Now this to me is not root bound. I will show you what root bound looks like. This is not root bound. I am not going to massage this. I am not going to touch this. Every time you do that, you damage the roots. You do not want to damage the roots. That is where shock comes from. So I'm going to plunk this entire shape into the soil. And I'm just going to gently fill it in around the sides. Preferably we won't be doing this in a sunny, windy location, but for filming I have to because otherwise you guys won't see anything. So petunia planted. So this guy is officially watered and fully planted now. He is going to go into a shady spot with no wind for the next day or so. And then he can go into his permanent spot on the deck because he has already been pre-hardened off while he was in those containers. So he is more than ready, but we just want to give him a day's rest after fuddling around with his roots. Now let's go move on to tomatoes. Okay, so this is what we're planting our tomatoes. This is in a raised bed, so I do not till my raised beds because I try to keep a zero till as much as possible. Um, reason being, I find that it helps my moisture conservation and it also prevents weed growth. So I am going to dig my hole starting off. These are tomatoes I have grown on my own inside. You probably saw them in my earlier videos. They have gotten mighty big. So I'm going to dig a pretty darn deep tomato pit. So to show you how deep this is, I will pop out one of my tomatoes. Ta-da! <laughs> it's deep. So it's probably level up to here. So I will put some cow manure in there. Um, portions of it will be useful for this year, but large portions of it won't be useful for this year. Uh, just because it is organic, so a lot of this is not going to be bioavailable right off the bat. But in years to come, it is helpful. Um, and then I am going to saturate my roots, just like we did with the petunia. And the reason being is saturated roots means less stress, less breakage. And then I'm going to simply clean up the bottom of the stem up until where I'm going to plant it. So I've cleaned up from here to there. That is approximately two inches. And then I'm going to plant it in. So I'm going to give it a little bit of a press, a little bit of an indentation. This is going to help the water pool in this spot because as I said before, this is not tilled around it. So this is going to add, act kind of like a highway for the water to sit which is good because these beds do dry out pretty quickly. And now I'm going to add my one last step, which is I think my savior for tomatoes, and that is my bucket. So let me go grab it. This is the bucket my <laughs> grandfather made for me. It's a big tunnel. The bottom has been cut off. I'm not sure how he cut the bottom off. I could ask him, but um, yeah. So this is the bucket. It's literally a five gallon pail, and I am just going to place it around my tomato dig it in a tiny bit. Now what's going to happen here is I have taken off the stress of the wind. I've taken off some of the stress of the sun and this is going to reduce my transplant stress a ton. So ta-da! I'll just give you a close up here of what's going on. So yeah, that's my little tomato. He is nicely shaded and you can see the plants beside it, how those ones are waving like crazy and this guy is not moving at all. So that's how big of a difference the bucket makes. So this is one way to prevent transplant shock in things like cucumbers, pumpkins, watermelons, that sort of thing. I have a video on this. Um, it'll be right here. It looks like this. You can check that video out and it will tell you exactly how I went about this and kind of the idea behind it, etc. and so forth. So plant shock in these guys. The pumpkins have zero and it's been about a week later. Um, this is a nutrient deficiency. Pumpkins are very heavy feeders, and this is the only amount of soil he gets So till he's transplanted. So he is completely reliant on me fertilizing, but 
I'm not too worried about it. It'll be fine because my new leaves are looking awesome. So that is what's going on there, but no plant shock. You can see these are nice and firm. Stems are happy, leaves are happy. That was a go. This one here, Looks like he's going through plant shock, <laughs> but he's not. <laughs> so I'll tell you why. If I take my, uh, you know how it's drooping like this? And that would be a sign of plant shock. How I know it's not plant shock though, is if I take the tip of my finger and I put it on the leaf, the whole stem moves and the leaf actually doesn't fold up. So this is not plant shock. This is another nutrient deficiency. Again, very heavy feeders, watermelons are. They are completely relying on the soil and I have um, been fertilizing. So again, my new leaves are happy and healthy and flat. It's just these guys are starting to cup. Um, these old ones were cupping because um, they were not getting enough nutrients. So that's what's going on here. So this is a method that I am confident I can say will transplant cucumbers, melons, pumpkins, squashes properly and healthy because if anyone's tried transplanting them, they know it's a pain in the ass. So there you go on that. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, be sure to share it with someone that you love that you think would benefit from learning all about how to plant tomatoes. And if you enjoyed it, be sure to give it a thumbs up, comment and subscribe. As always, happy planting. And we're here, Canadians. We are finally able to put stuff outdoors. Thank goodness. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye. Oh, hey there. Are you still watching? Make sure to hit that subscribe button for some more awesome plant videos.